It's a new year and this means new opportunity. And I want to tell you now, your biggest risk, your biggest risk to your future is not being invested in the market in 2022. All right, let's dig in. We got to talk about why. Hello, everyone. I am Trish Regan. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. It's good to have you here as always. Just a quick reminder, you can get more of me, a whole lot more. <laughs> There's lots of things that I can't say sort of in the mainstream platform, but that I am able to say in a platform that really believes in free speech and that's on local. So go to trishregan.locals.com for more. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is you. Um, it, it's too easy, I think, in light of everything that's going on in terms of our, our frustration, perhaps at times with our federal government. Um, and in many cases, you know, hey, if you live in California, <laughs> probably with your local government as well. But when we get frustrated with our federal government, it's too easy to kind of throw in the towel and say, you know, what? I don't want to be invested. I don't want to be invested in this market because I don't believe in what's happening. And, and, and this is sort of what I want to talk to you about today is a reminder that it's critical especially in light of some of the mistakes that our federal government is making as it pertains to inflation, it's critical that you are invested and you are looking out for your future and you're looking out for number one and your family. And it's very easy to say, okay, well, you know, because they're so messed up, I don't want any part of that. But, but if you don't take part in the system, then the system can actually work against you. And by that, you know, I mean, even inflation, we look at all the data that's coming in and, and it's really and truly, it's your everyday Americans, the very people, by the way, that the federal government keeps claiming to want to help. It's those everyday Americans that get hurt most by inflation, because when gas prices go up, when food prices go up, when housing costs go up, these are the people, everyday Americans, poor Americans that are most affected. So how do you, how do you make sure that even if you're, you're earning a very modest living that you don't get trapped in that and for me it, it goes back to really being thoughtful about your planning for your future about retirement planning about making sure that you're putting your money if you work for a company and you have a full-time job into that 401k oftentimes of course they have a company match so it's like free money it grows tax-free i mean these are sort of no-brainers personal finance 101 that you should be doing and i hope you're doing but also beyond that what can you afford personally? What can you put away for yourself and your family? And, and I think that you, you need to go back to basics. I always say, I mean, look at companies that you like, companies that you use, companies you're interested in, and start doing research on those. Or if you don't really want to even get in that far, you can invest in index funds. Just make sure everything's diversified. I mean, do me that favor. <laughs> I like to be able to sleep at night for you. So make sure you have a diversified portfolio. And that means understanding your tolerance for risk, how old you are, how much time you have in the market. Look, over a 20 year period, it's pretty darn hard to beat the S&P 500. You know, you could have a fancy managed fund, but when it's all said and done, a lot of things come out in the wash. And if you've got that 20 year time horizon, it would be very hard to beat the S&P 500. Of course, you got to have that 20 year time horizon. So if you're someone who's older and you're looking to retire in the next five years, they still think you want to be invested in this market, albeit with more caution. Look, until the 10 years start screaming something different in the treasury market, what, it, what, what you're learning is it is risk on. And so the market, the equity market, the stock market will continue most likely to go up in this kind of environment. Aside from that, and again, like we're going to just, you know, give the federal government a pass here because apparently they can't do anything. <laughs> they can't get anything done. Thank goodness. Joe Manchin's not delivering for them and I do not expect he will. That would lead to even more inflation, which is perhaps a, a good thing in, in the near term uh, for, for equity prices. Long term, forget about it. But anyway, they're, they're not going to get anything done with Joe Manchin. They're not going to get anything done, period. So you have to understand that the hand it is that we are being dealt. And... I actually think that despite these hiccups and challenges and this lousy administration that doesn't seem to know what day it is, I do think that there are some positive signs going on because I have faith in the American people. I have faith in the American consumer and Americans are like, to heck with this. Like we're over it. We, we want to be out and about. We want to get going with our lives. 
Uh, there's a lot of indicators you can look at. I mean, I, I've in the past looked to the, the Starbucks indicator because, you know, who the heck is willing to spend $5 on lattes? But uh, there's a few other indicators out there that are showing some good things. Who knew French champagne? Apparently there's a, there's a run on fa French fancy champagne. They are making more money in the champagne industry than ever before. The sales are expected to top $6.2 billion. Why? Because again, people want to celebrate. They want to move on with their lives. So as we go into New Year's, you're seeing people are saying to heck with it and they're having the parties anyway and, and they're toasting and they're celebrating. There are other indicators like retail sales showing up at a 17 year high now. So people are still out shopping, even in the face of everything that's going on. Jewelry sales up 32%. So people are willing to spend on these luxury items and good luck if you want a Tesla. Good luck trying to find that. So all of these are actually very bullish indicators in that people are willing to kind of go out on that limb and spend money on what you might say is sort of foolish stuff, right? Champagne or, or jewelry or fancy cars. But that bodes well for the other for the economy. The other thing that bodes well is that we saw in 2020, the final numbers are in. Do you know that 4.4 million small businesses were created? 4.4 million. That's a lot. I mean, on average, we'd be lucky to see maybe 600 and change thousand businesses, 600 and something thousand businesses created every year. Yet you had 4.4 million created during COVID. And this year so far, we don't have all the numbers, but I've seen for the first six months of the year in 2021, you had over 500,000 jobs, uh, forgive me, businesses, businesses which create jobs, right? Don't tell Elizabeth Warren that, careful, don't, don't let that be said, but those businesses which create jobs, so 500,000 businesses have been created in the first half of the year. And one could anticipate that even more, or at least something equal that in the second six half, second half of 2021, the second six months. So all of these things to me indicate there's some good times ahead. I also think that we're in the middle of, if you would, a, a kind of technological revolution as it relates to web 3.0 or the metaverse or whatever you want to call it. But that's where at some point you and I are gonna seem like we're in the same room. So I'm talking to you through a screen, but what if you could actually be in the same room with me and we could talk face to face instead of via this chat on a platform? That's where we're heading. Think about the technology that's gonna go into that in terms of the, the semiconductor industry and how vital that will be in terms of the hardware, the software, everything surrounding that. That is sort of a new wave coming if you would in technology. So all of these things are really positive, which gets me back to you want to be part of these markets right now in some way, shape or form. A quick word from one of our sponsors, you know how much I believe in a diversified portfolio. Part of that diversification includes gold. I invest in gold. I encourage you to do the same. And for, for that investment, here's who I trust. Legacy Precious Metals. LegacyPMInvestments.com is their website. You can download a free investing guide. But you know, I know, inflation is not going to change. In fact, inflation is going to get a lot worse in my estimation before it ever gets better. So LegacyPMInvestments.com, 1-866-589-0560. Again, that number is 1-866-589-0560. Do give them a call and use my name. They'll take good care of you. But I, I, I'm very serious when I say that inflation is here and it is not going away anytime soon. We'll see how much the Fed is able to get a handle on this. I tend not to have the most faith, if you would, in our Federal Reserve, but I really think that your biggest risk, your biggest risk in 2022 is in fact not being not being invested in this market. So make sure you do that. The other thing I wanna to talk to you very quickly about is selectquote.com, another one of our wonderful sponsors here, selectquote.com, where you can get your life insurance quote. That's another risk. I mean, my goodness, um, I, I've told you stories before about people I know that did not get life insurance and had um, a pretty untimely situation that they couldn't have anticipated, nor their families. So it's really, really important right now. Go to selectquote.com. They will give you every quote that's out there from every single possible excellent provider. They've been in business for decades and they help through their technology to match you with the right life insurance product. So these are important things to do because it's all about investing in yourself, right? You really need 
to do that. You want to invest in yourself for your own sake. Um, I, I really think that 2022 should be about prioritizing, prioritizing yourself, prioritizing your finances, prioritizing your health. This is a good opportunity to kind of wipe the slate clean and say, okay, this is my decision. I don't get, you know, there may be all this craziness going on over here, but let me control what I can control. And you can control your savings. You can make sure that you're putting that money to work for you in the future. You can, in some ways, control your health, right? By, by leading a healthy lifestyle. These are the things within our realm, and this is what we need to really prioritize. So do yourself that favor. Do me that favor. These are themes that I'm going to continue talking about as we go into 22 right now, because as much as I get into the politics and as much as I talk about inflation and the disaster that the Biden administration is, and what they want to do to our wonderful capital system, capitalist system, I do want to, I want to look out for you and I want you to look out for you. So start looking at how to invest now. These are important years and important months ahead. And you've got to make sure that you have your priorities. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, I want you to go to my new platform here on Locals. Do check me out, trishregan.locals.com. Again, that is trishregan.locals.com. Of course, my website where we have all the top stories of the day, trishintel.com. You can see what I'm watching there. But on Locals, you get a chance to see, uh, <laughs> shall we say, a whole other side of me, right, that we can't always put out front and center in this mainstream uh, tech arena. So I encourage you to do that and we will talk again next week. But remember, it's the start of a new year with many good things ahead, certainly for you. Make sure that you are there to have all the best opportunities in your path. Thanks again and I'll see you on Locals.